Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. Manchester United demolished, annihilated and embarrassed by Manchester City. Um, look, where do, where do you start with that? There's just so, so much to discuss. But I think the first thing I would say is that there's there's unquestionably uh, a lack of effort at Manchester... No, sorry, a, a lack of talent at Manchester United. But when you're talking in a Manchester derby about a lack of effort and desire, then we really are truly in trouble. I mean, there's five players in that team... I wouldn't pick them again. I think they've had their chances at Manchester United. I wouldn't pick them again. Because at some point, you get to a point where they've been bad for so long. When Why would you ever trust them again? And there were, there were certain players today, I was just like, you, you, you've basically made a career. You've, you've got a contract on passion. You know who I'm talking about, Fred and McTominay. Your whole career is about passion. It's about playing against Leeds and having a good game once a season. In a game where we need a bit of passion, you can't even provide that. And then you're really in trouble because you're absolutely exposed. We were so slow to mark players and go with the runners today. I actually think we were so slow. We're so li we're so far behind Man City. I reckon if you go around McTominay, Maguire, Fred's, wan Lindelof and Tellez's house today, they've probably still got the Christmas decorations up. They're so far behind where they needed to be today. It was absolutely shambolic defensively from Manchester United's back six. And considering that this back six, all right, Luke Shaw was playing at left back, but apart from Luke Shaw, that back six basically kept Oli in a job last year, grinding out clean sheets. They, they've just given up. They gave up. And I tell you what, when you're 3-1 down in a Manchester derby with 20 minutes to go, and you've got a slim chance of getting top four, to sit back and let Manchester City, with 3-1 up, have 90% possession is embarrassing. It's an absolute joke. And I'm trying my best not to start ranting and screaming here because I think the calmer I am, the clearer the message comes across and cannot be explained or written off as just hysterical. That is a Manchester derby. I have seen crap Man City sides 20, 30 years ago come to United when we had amazingly good teams and give us a game because it's a derby. They don't have the talent, but they'll come and they'll have a go. They'll be focused. They'll play for 90 minutes. They'll play like their lives depend on it. Yeah, why? How come? How come like Burnley, if they're playing for their, you know, Burnley could need to beat Man City at the Etihad on the last game of the season and win because they'll play that a lot like their lives depend on it, even though they're not good enough. That could happen. We've seen it happen time and time again. There was nothing to stop United going and getting a result today, apart from the fact that they're not good enough and they don't deserve to wear the shirt. Absolutely shambolic. And look, look at two of the goals. Kevin De Bruyne, one of the best players in the world, left unmarked. Mares left unmarked on the third goal. On the fourth goal, um, Gundogan just skips past Fred and McTominay like they're traffic cones. You know, in fact, they're not even traffic cones because they're yellow and they give you a warning. The normal crappy orange ones with no reflectors on. You know, the ones that you find in the beach that the people have thrown away that are useless. I mean, just, just absolutely... I, th I personally think there's so much to pick apart in that team and I don't want to individualise it. But that's that's without question the worst performance I've ever seen from Scott McTominay. And I think he's pretty bad anyway. But he gets by on telling people to F off and push them and, and put a sliding tackle in, in the rain. He was absolutely abysmal today, but you, you can't just put it on him. Maguire's meant to be a captain. I'm telling, I tweeted it earlier. I'm not even going to start telling you jokes about he, he runs around like a tranquilized garden no more. You know, he, he runs around on a Shetland pony with a breadstick trying to take us to war. He's a bloody, he's a joke as a captain. And it's, the thing is, it's not even funny now. You know, we've all had those moments, you know, he, he turns like a bus and a lorry, this like they are. He, he gets run past more than a finishing line. He, you know, he, he gets turned around more than a roundabout. We've all got the funny little jokes, but it's not funny anymore. It's not, I, I can't, you know, I always associate a bit of comedy to something when I'm, when I'm angry. I'm past angry. I'm fed up of it. It's just not good enough. You shouldn't be playing for Manchester United. I said this morning, if Bay, if Varane's out, I'd play Bay, Because Maguire is awful. He's absolutely terrible. And also, he's meant to be the captain of the club. I think Lindelof was bad today, but he's the captain. And I'm, 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 I'm lost and confused on the point that with 20 minutes to go, we're giving up 90% possession and everyone's walking around with the head round like that. I've never seen a captain as bad as that. It's, it's disgusting. Forget his, forget his individual performance. He is the captain of Manchester United, and he's allowing ten other players to walk around the pitch with the head on, you know, hands in the pockets, head down, giving up ninety percent possession. You're the bloody captain, mate. That's on you. I don't care about your individual performance. We'll talk about that on the player ratings. Mark every player out of ten, six being the average. Links in the description. I'm talking about the captain of Manchester United, pal. I'm talking about leadership. Why are those players giving up 90% possession when Man City are 3-1 up? 
we get one goal back with 20 minutes to go, we might, you know, we, we might do something. Rashford and Lingard, they've been at this team since they're a bloody kid. Uh, they may as well have had the phone and their Instagram and gone, look at me, I'm doing a story in our Etihad. Because mm. you're doing sod all else. The, the team is just on its knees. And, and don't give me crap about lack of confidence. There's the exit door if it's lack of confidence. Because I tell you what, you speak to people like Roy Keane and Gary Neville and Ryan Giggs and all these great players with strong mentalities we've had in the past. The criticism they've had from the crowd and the press is nothing to what these players are getting at the moment. Because... I don't think they're getting anywhere near as enough criticism because people just accept that they're crap. And they are crap. They're just not good enough. And I tell you what, Ronaldo's the problem, Faison. This is my favourite sentence of the night. I, You know what? I'm so glad, actually, that Cristiano Ronaldo didn't play today because there's no way he would have won us that game. No way. He would have had a crap performance and everyone would have said, Ronaldo's dusted. He's finished. It's Ronaldo's fault. He's the problem. And I, I, I almost tweeted it this morning. I was going to say, if we lose today, it will absolutely destroy the Ronaldo haters. Because if we lose today, we will lose in the same way we would have lost with Ronaldo. Ronaldo would have played today and the same thing would have happened. It'd have been a graveyard shift. Nothing would have happened. We would have been dominated. But the great thing is, what people don't really realise is, we're shit with Ronaldo and we're shit without Ronaldo. So what does that mean? We're just shit whether Ronaldo's here or not. And that's the bottom line. So this Ronaldo's the problem. Ronaldo's this. Ronaldo's that. The best thing he did was probably have a hip injury for this weekend because it would, if he'd have played, it would have took away the fo the focus on what the real problem is. Ronaldo ain't the problem at this club. It doesn't matter whether Ronaldo's here or Ronaldo's not here. We've had a big glimpse today of what happens when Ronaldo's not here. It doesn't matter whether Ronaldo's here or not. We are absolutely shite. And the best thing as well, as well. All we've heard for the last three months from Maguire and Ranić and other players is, yeah, well, we've stabilised. We're a lot better at the back now. Yeah, we're, we're defending a lot better. You know, it's disappointing that we're not winning the games that we should be winning, but we're a lot better at the back. What have we been talking about for the last month? We haven't played anybody since Ranić came. They're all bottom half of the table teams. The best team we've played is West Ham, who are never going to smash anyone 3 or 4 nil. The first team we play that's capable of scoring goals... And they beat us 4-1. So all this, we're defensively better. All this, we're defensively sorted. All this, we've got better stability now and we've got better structure. The first team we've played that can hand our arse on a plate has handed our arse on a plate in a very, very big way. And they could have had more. For me, David De Gea was man of the match. Like, he made three, three or four saves that didn't lead to goals. Um, so, look, the first decent team we play and they smashed us out of the park. Um... So all this crap about us being better defensively, that's probably the worst defensive performance I've seen since Liverpool, which was under Ollie, and I think it was more or less the same back four, wasn't it? So, yeah, unbelievable. And, you know, as I said, how you can give so many... I mean, the thing that just jumps out at me, that absolutely leaps out at me, is this lack of effort, lack of desire, lack of concentration... Ranić spoke about it. We spoke a bit about it on the preview. To win this game today, we had to focus for 90 minutes and work hard. And then when we got the ball, we had to use the ball well. We didn't focus for 90 minutes. We didn't focus for five minutes. We were 1-0 down. We didn't work hard for 90 minutes. We didn't concentrate for 90 minutes. And when we got the ball, we didn't look after the ball. We completely did everything wrong. And I think it's a disgusting um, indication of where this team is at and the mentality of those players that they can put in a performance like that and walk off the pitch and, I, I, you know, if I was Ranić, I'd have gone and got in the team bus for five minutes from the end and driven, but, you know, they all live in bloody Manchester or around that area anyway. They can get an Uber, but the reality is they deserve to walk home. Just, just disgrace. And you know what? They'll, they'll all be sat there in the dressing room feeling sorry for themselves. And ultimately, what what sympathy do you want the, the most, in, the most if I could describe that game in, in, in a couple of sentences, I would say it wasn't even about City's talent. We know City are a better team than us. Pep's got, they've got a better coach. They've got, a be they've got better coaches. They've got better structure. They've got a better chemistry. Uh, they have got better players, even though, ridiculously, if you lined up their 11 against our 11, we're paying more wages to our 11 than their 11. So they're better. They're a better talented side. It's very, very clear. But they didn't win the game because of talent today. They won the game because they worked harder as a team than we did. 
So how how explain to me this? How can you play a game of football against the team that's better than you, but then also let them work harder than you? It defies logic. We're not as good as them, and we think we're going to beat them if we don't work as hard as them. Like defensively, Man City were really good. Like there was a couple of times where we got in, and their defence was just absolutely after it, hungry for every ball. Tracking back. Every time we broke, they were getting six back. I saw us in the second half where Man City were having five against four. Like, Fred and McTominay weren't even tracking back. I don't know whether they've been on the piss. I don't know whether they've got the flu. But they're at, their effort levels were abysmal. Your job is... McTominay and Fred didn't even have to get it. I don't think they ever went in City's half. Their job was to protect the back four and they were, like, knackered. They were knackered. It's like me trying to run round the block. They were absolutely dead on their feet and they've had a week off. I, I just do not get it. And that is the appalling thing for me is that ultimately, if you can be asked to watch that game back time and time again, you will see lazy defensive work from Manchester United players not marking people up. You know, the third goal by Mares, where he's, it's a corner is completely unmarked on the edge of the box. 15, 20 minutes before that, they have a free kick. They pass it to the edge of the box. No one's marking Mares. He shoots over the bar. Like, first goal from De Bruyne is unmarked. Second goal from De Bruyne is unmarked. Our players are so thick. Our leadership is so useless. Our communication from the touchline and within the team is so ignored that we'll keep making the same mistake again and again. We'll keep leaving players unmarked. Gundogan at the end could have made it five. Unmarked. De Bruyne gets two goals. Unmarked. Shouldn't happen one time. If it happens one time... Don't let that happen again. Don't leave him free again. 15 minutes later, we leave him free again. Mares shot on the edge of the box. Who was marking him? Don't let it happen again. 15 minutes later, he's scoring a goal and marked on the edge of the box. It's just basics. Absolute basics. The first goal, three red shirts around Bernardo Silva when he puts the cross in. Nobody's blocking the first cross. It's, it's terrifying. Absolutely terrifying how, how bad we are. And I tell you what as well. It's terrifying how that back four are so static. They're like a bunch of statues. They're terrified of the ball. They're terrified of marking people. They, 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 they just don't move. It, it's, it's just... Ultimately, ultimately, if you could take away the value of these players and revalue them now, I wouldn't pay over £20 million for any of our defenders on that pitch today. Forget the goalkeeper. I wouldn't pay £20 million for Wan-Bissaka at the moment. 20 million tops. I wouldn't pay 20 million for Lindelof at the moment. I wouldn't pay 20 million for Maguire and I wouldn't pay 20 million for Tellez. I, I, and yet, we've spent 130 million pounds on wan and Maguire. It's terrifying how... And look, some of it will come down to coaching, but it's terrifying how bad some of our players are. As for McTominay and Fred, I said it in the match, Fred's got one year left on his contract. We're going to give him a new contract in the summer. All he's done is smile. Like, he's going to get a new contract in the summer for bloody smiling. There was people in the watch-along chat going, I think Fred's done all right today. He's been bloody useless. Absolutely useless. I'm telling you, you could get a Preston North End midfield in today and they'd have done a better job than McTominay and Fred because they would have run about a bit. They'd have stuck to position. They'd have stuck with the runners. For 18 months, I've been watching McTominay and Fred give goals away. I remember Everton, was it Rodriguez, edge of the box last season? Um, St. Maximin in the box at Old Trafford last season. So many goals are given up by McTominay and Fred, not picking the runners up. It's unbelievable. The sad thing is this result will cause no one to reflect, says Stephen. Mark, is it time to sell Rashford McTominay as well, says Michael. We can't sell these players. This is why when I said in January, I think things are going to get worse over the next 18 months. It's only taken two months for me to be proved right. I said in January we won't get top four and I think things will get worse. And people said, well, we will get top four. And, you know, I think you're being a bit over dramatic. Within six weeks, I've been proved right. Things have got worse. Arsenal are a point ahead of us with three games in hand and we've got to go to the Emirates. That's top, you know, I'm, I, Arsenal, if you don't finish top four, that's a world record bottle job. You're a point ahead of us with three games in hand and we've got to go to the Emirates. If you don't get top four, you've, you know, I'm not even putting pressure on you. It's a bottle job. So somehow we, we're not getting top four with that team. It's that's on the players this season. I'm sorry. Oli was a joke. And look, Ranjik, I think he's done a decent job. But he's swimming. You know, Ranjik's jumped into a swimming pool of shit. 
as I said before the game, he can do breaststroke, butterfly, it doesn't matter. Look at me, give me the job. Ralph, you stink, you're swimming in crap. There's nothing he can do. He can't clean that. He, he is he is tainted by the shit pool he drink he, he, he's swimming in. But um, the players are an absolute disgrace this season. They're, they're an absolute disgrace. And how they've put themselves into this position is, is, is just, you know, because they're not good enough. Effectively, they're just not good enough. We had 4% possession in the second half. How can the board watch this team every week, says Soham. Uh, you can't say any of the players did all right when none of them touched the ball, says Brandon. And, and United, like table football players, totally static. 60 found it easy, says Andrew, 81. And instead of Rashford and Lingard, we needed at least Matic to bring some control in the midfield. Tired of McTominay not being able to put in a tackle, says Javier. Well, look, you know what, as well? I mean, just quickly, there's a few things I want to talk about before the player ratings. But, you, 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 you know... Rangnick's not above criticism. I think a lot of what he says is great. I think he's a, you know, I like the way that he wants to try and get us playing. I think when we attack, we do attack better than we ever did under Oli. But why did he not take McTominay off at half time? Why did he not take Fred off? M Matic, on a bad day, would have been streets ahead of McTominay. He didn't do it. Why not take Wamba Saka off for Delo? I mean, is it lost on anybody else that Mares is a brilliant right winger and yet 80% of their attacks went through Grealish? who's not as good as Mares. They clearly thought our right-hand side was crap. And that includes Alanga, Wambasaka, and McTominay. That was that right-hand side, and, and they absolutely nailed it. They just kept going down that side all the time. Why not bring Delo on? You know, why not take McTominay off for Matic? They were targeting that right-hand side. Why did you not make those changes? Why did he take Pogba off after an hour when we've not had a game for a week and we haven't got a game for another six days? Pogba can't be tired. That was... You know, he legitimately thought, thought, I'll take Paul Pogba off, who's got one of the best accurate passes in world football, long passes. And he brings him on for Lingard, who has been crap for two years in a United shirt. I know he played well for West Ham, but in a United shirt, he's been absolutely terrible, especially since Christmas, because he doesn't want to be here. Why in the million years would you take Pogba off for Lingard? So, look, let's not pretend Rangnick got it right today as well. It's probably his worst, well, it is his worst game because of the result, but also I think he got a lot of decisions wrong. If it's true, Ronaldo Rufi used to be a sub, it's obvious. Um, I don't know what... And they, David, I am not having that. Manchester United have just lost 4-1 in a Manchester derby where at least seven players in a red shirt have been a disgrace to the shirt. And you want to try and bring Ronaldo in for responsibility because you've heard a rumour that is a load of bollocks at the moment that Ronaldo refused to be on the bench. And to be honest with you, there's no truth in it. And even if there was any truth in it, Well, I, 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 we've spent enough time talking about something anyway. There is no way that Manchester United have declined this much since the rights Fergus and the owners' boards clearly need to talk about winning and just want to make dollars, says T1NY. And the sad thing is the result will cause no one to reflect, says Stephen Rossi. Well, I wanted to say that because Richard Arnold, the new CEO, was sat watching that game and people go, oh, he'll be furious. He'll be furious for that. He'll want to make changes. Can I just remind people that the most telling thing was not Richard Arnold being in the dress, uh, being in the in the crowd. It was the fact that um, Man City fans were doing that Poznan thing, taking the piss out of us, and I, I didn't even feel any anger because at the battle with Manchester United fans at the moment is the battle within. We argue amongst ourselves too much. There'll be people tonight blaming Ronaldo, De Gea, or you know, sticking up for Maguire, or blaming Maguire, or blaming Ranić, or not blaming Ranić, or blaming Pogba, or blaming Bruno. That's one thing where we get wrong. We, you know, at the end of the day, even if Harry Maguire is the worst captain Manchester United ever had, is he the reason we are where we are? He's a he's, he's a contributor, but he didn't buy himself. He didn't make himself captain. The problems as within this fan base is that we argue too much amongst each other, and that will never make change happen. The change needs to happen at the top of that football club. Richard Arnold's not a new CEO. Richard Arnold's not a new CEO. Richard Arnold's been at that club for the same amount of time as Ed Woodward. He's basically worked with Ed Woodward. That's, that's what he's done. And for me, you've, you, you know, you've, you've, you've got to look at that. You've, you've got to look at the ownership. You've got to look at the board and, uh, people talk about Ten Hag making a difference. Ten Hag is not going to make a difference to that team. Ralph Rangnick's a very good coach, but he can't get those crap players to play well. 
Ten Hag will not make a big difference at that club. The only way that Ten Hag will make a big difference at that club or Pochettino or any decent manager will make a difference at that club is if he can walk into that club and say, right, Maguire better not be here on Monday. wan better not be here on Monday. Marcus Rashford better not be here on Monday. Tellez better not be here on Monday. Uh, Fred better not be here on Monday. McTominay better not be here on Monday. And on Tuesday, I don't want to see Mata, Matic and a load of others. You've got to get rid of about 15 players and then you've got to replace about 15 players. That's never going to happen. We're not going to sell Rashford. We're not going to sell Maguire. We're not going to sell Fred. We're not going to sell McTominay. So for the next three years, we're going to see those same players in a United shirt. And it doesn't matter whether Ten Hag's the manager or not. We won't change anything. Plus, this board, Richard Arnold's been there for years. Matt Judge is still there. Murta's still there. Murta's not a new director of football. He's been there for years. These people are the part of the problem. Yeah, the players are the problem, but... The only people who can solve the problem are the owners and are the board members and they've got no intention of changing it. Bit of spin, bit of this, bit of that, keep it spinning around, get a new manager in, put it all on them and we go again. How long is it going to be over the next few weeks before Ranjit gets outed as the problem? We've seen it with every single manager we've had since David Moyes. And I think all those managers did deserve to be sacked. Yes, they did. But were they really the problem? They were a contributor. But the problem is not having the right leader from the top making the decisions all the way down. You know, who who decided to make Harry Maguire captain? Who decided to spend £80 million on him? Who decides to give Fred a new contract? Who decides decides that McTominay should be anywhere near the first team? Who decides that Wan-Bissaka should have been bought for £50 million? You know, who decides that we, we shouldn't have bought a midfielder? These are the things that really matter. Not going after individual players. And of course the conversation will we'll never change it. We'll never shift it. Because as a fan base we'll all be arguing about different things. And he's a knobhead and he doesn't speak for me. And I know what I'm on about. And, and, and the Glazers will prosper. After today can we stop with this Ronaldo blaming. This team is bad with or without him says Joey. Well I knew that anyway Joey. And I think that's there's no positive today. But actually all these people who've been going on about Ronaldo. You look absolutely stupid as, you, as you're always going to look. Because... No Ronaldo in that team doesn't make us better. It makes us worse. No matter how bad you think Ronaldo is, we're worse without him. Um, and I said it this morning, the big the big loss was going to be Varane. I think at least two of those goals are preventable with a decent centre-back. And we did miss Varane today. And I think we missed Luke Shaw as well. I think Luke Shaw is a better left-back than, than Tellez defensively. We have to admit that our players aren't good enough, says John. And this was heartbreaking. You can like certain players, but we have to face it. We can't win anything with weak mentality players, says Dave King. Maguire never should be United captain again or play for us. Not one for them back for, says Clay. And Skulls just said United is not world class, which is right. We would not be able to attract this, these players in time. Europa League, says Druv. And I hope United gets relegated so the leeches sells and all these crap will leave the club. Um... And Alex says, 130 million for Maguire and Wambasaka. How much can we really get for them in the summer and how much to replace them, says uh, Alex. And Roy Keane said the manager will be criticised about his tactics, but the players are not running back playing for Manchester United is unacceptable. He's absolutely spot on, Vikran. Roy can see it, you can see it, I can see it. When you're not marking players, when you're not tracking back, it was so visible today. It was almost like they downed tools in a Manchester derby. Look, it's unacceptable to down tools in any game. You know... We saw it with Mourinho. If you're at home to someone like Southampton and you know Mourinho's one game away from the sack and you're down tools, it's unacceptable. It is completely unacceptable. But people do it. But when you've still got a chance of top four and you're playing in a Manchester derby, which means so much to your fan base, and you're down tools like that, that's disgusting. And they did down tools. I don't think McTominay's a good player. I don't think Fred's a good player. I don't think Maguire's a good player. But And there are others. But I don't think that was just bad performance. I think that was bad attitude, bad concentration. And, and I, I'll call that out any day of the week. I'll call that out over bad, you know. You, I, these players don't necessarily pick themselves. I don't think some of these players are anywhere near good enough. And, and they're not. In my mind, they're nowhere near good enough. But when you don't, when you down tools, that is unacceptable. And they'll, they'll say they didn't. I saw performances today that weren't just bad performances. They were literally lack of effort. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody told me Scott McTominay's still ill. I really wouldn't. I thought it was that bad a performance from him and a few others. I don't know whether there's a sickness bug around that. I would. I really wouldn't be surprised if somebody came out and said that the United team had a an outbreak of, of food poisoning or something. There was that lack of effort in that team today. It was disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. So slow. 
really, really bad. And, uh, you know, maybe that will come out. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's something United can say happened because it would almost make it, well, not acceptable, but, you know, give them a little bit of a, an excuse. But the thing for me as well is that, you know, I did, I think I tweeted it, five of those players should never play for United again. And that's half a team. Maguire, wan Tellez, McTominay, Fred. I wouldn't pick him ever again. And you know why I wouldn't pick him again? Not because it's one game. It's because this is two years. It's two years of these same players putting in consistently bad performances. And are we not at that point now? You know, like Ashley Young would play one world-class game in 10 and then it'd be average or poor, whatever. After two years of this now, it's... Are these players ever going to turn it around? Are you ever going to trust them? I mean, imagine Maguire plays well next week or Fred plays well next week. We'll give them the praise, but do you? We, you, you never. I'll never trust them again. They, they've had their chance. They've had two years of chances, and and they've consistently failed. I don't feel there's a comeback. I don't feel that it's you know they've played under two different managers as well. They're just they're just distinctly not good enough. And and that's the terrifying. And you, yeah, you could add, you can definitely add more players into that. I can see people in the chat are saying, "What about Rashford?" Um, just, Kino just said that the statements will be out from the players next week, saying they're sorry. Meaningless statements, says Amit. Well, he knows, doesn't he? I mean, it must be you know, it's it's hard for the fans to swallow, but it must be disgusting for a, a Roy Keane or a or a Ryan Giggs or a David Beckham or a, you know anybody that's won anything with that club and knows what it means to win something will know the effort that you have to put in. And if it's disgusting to us as the fans, imagine how disgusting it is for them. What manager after seeing that game will want to take over this club, says Grant Fisher. Keen had said that these players have thrown Ollie under the bus and they will do it in another manager. And that's what happened in the second half. Dis Mo Mojo, it's just disgusting. I don't care what you think about different players or agendas or anything like that. This ain't about De Gea's distribution. This ain't about Ronaldo. This ain't about Pogba or Bruno or any or Rashford or any other agenda that there is out there that's nonsensical. This is about a lack of effort and a lack of talent. And you know what? There was times in that game today where I was just watching it and going, yeah, Man City are a better team than us with a better coach. And yeah, they're going to win big trophies. But I can see a Man City player running harder to get that ball. I can see a Man City player not misplacing an easy pass. I can see a Man City player winning the tackle that we could win. It's man against man. It's human against human. You know, the fact that you can play tiki taka football doesn't mean that you can run harder, tackle harder, play a pass better. You know, these are principles of a game that are simple. And I tell you what, I'm going to do a video very, very soon. I'm going to take a ball down a local park and I'm going to, I'm going to film myself beating the first man from crosses because it's not that hard and we can't do it. I think you're giving these players a bit too much credit. They weren't sick. They're just terrible, says Sean Turner. I'm going to stop watching football for a while. My mental health is more important than a manipulating board, uh, says Bad. And Manchester United still haven't won a single game when Ronaldo hasn't started since his return, says Vabath. And the interesting thing is, there are still people in our fan base that will put this on the players and put their faith in the hands of a board that has inflicted this last nine years on us. That's the contradictory bullshit that I just don't understand. Like... People will go in on the players tonight and say, we need a new manager and we need a clear out in the summer. Who's going to appoint the new manager and who's going to sort the clear out? The same people that have given these these players in the first place. If there's five players in that team that you don't like, they're here because of this board that is still here, bought them. Like, the problem is a, the players aren't good enough. That's very, very clear. But they're pawns in a game of chess. Who's, the, who's playing the game of chess? The board. They're inflicting this on us. They are the issue at this football club. The Glazers and the board are the problem. And I'll tell you what, I saw a picture of Richard Arnold sat next to David Gill at the Etihad today. And I was I was depressed. For that moment of two couple of seconds he was on screen, I was depressed because I thought, this guy don't even know football. His background isn't football, it's banking. And he is going to architect our future out of this mess. I said it in January and I'll say it again. The next 18 months for Manchester United, big, big trouble i think next season we are in danger of dropping below the lights of newcastle aston villa aston villa are looking at people like kessie and basuma to add to a team that is developing we're already hearing that we might only spend 80 50 or 80 million pounds this summer we need to spend 200 million and we need to make we need to sell about 100 million pounds worth of players uh, do you think we should get zizu in we need winners he won't come anywhere near us mate he's an intelligent guy he's not going to come anywhere near us is he Let's be real. Um, but, yeah, I think... I mean, I, I, don't, I didn't understand the Pogba um, substitution at all. And um, I thought that in relation to... Um, 
I just think, you know, just before we do the player ratings, one of the big things that this board has told us about over the last few years, and one of the things Ollie spoke about consistently for three years, was this work hard, efforts, DNA, culture. It's a load of bollocks. It's it's the biggest load of disappointing bollocks we've all heard. This culture and discipline and playing for the badge. They almost kidded us that, you know, all right, I used to, I could almost, I don't know whether Ollie actually said it, but it was the message I always got from the board and Ollie was that, yeah, Man City and Liverpool, they play this really good football and they win titles, but they don't work as hard as we do. They haven't got the Man United DNA like we have. You know, they haven't got the cultural reset that like we've got. And we we, we got we got conned on on hard work, cultural reset and DNA. And I felt that I felt that that game today was the pinnacle. It was the final nail in the coffin coffin of that crap. That this thing that we've just had to believe that was a cultural reset, heading in the right direction, everyone pulling together, working hard with the passion for the badge. They've just gone and absolutely opened our eyes to the fact that that was always and still is a biggest load of crap in the world. I've just seen a United side go down, go to the Etihad and down tools, literally down tools in front of our eyes. The lack of effort, the lack of talent and the lack of desire. And look, I would include people like Bruno Fernandes in that. I, that's that's not Bruno Fernandes today. That, that, that That's just nowhere near the level needed today. Um, and God knows what's going on in the club behind closed doors. I don't know. Don't lump Tellez in with Maguire. McTominay has been good and is showing effort. Unlike, I thought it was crap tonight, Stone. I'm not going to individualise it. We'll do the player ratings now. I thought Tellez was crap. Our good players, pe people are calling, will leave. And this is going to get a lot worse, mate, says Andy and Bruno. Well, Pogba's gone in the summer, isn't he? I don't even know. You know, you've got Pogba for two more months and you take him off after an hour to keep people like Fred and McTominay on the pitch. I don't, I don't understand the Pogba substitution at all. Can't, fa can't fault De Gea for anything, uh, uh, says Sean Th Thornton. And Paul Scholes, this won't change until Man United get the right man. Just how can pundits be this blind? It's not about the right man, Scholesy, the real G. It's not about the right man. You're telling me Pep Guardiola comes into United in the summer and gets Maguire and wan and McTominay and Fred and the rest of them playing good football. This is, this is a this is a lot. The biggest problem we've got, and I said it in January. The biggest problem we've got is even if we did a reset, which we won't. Even if we did half a reset, which we might, we'll still keep the players that ain't good enough. Um, there's nothing more I would have loved than Rashford to come on today and score a worldie and get us back into the game. I'd love it, but he didn't, and he didn't look anywhere near like he would do it. And the thing with Rashford at the moment is that. How long does his bad run go on that it just becomes that he's bad? Like it's been going on for a long, long time now. So I just don't, I don't think there's any trust in these players. There's certainly no trust in the club. And I think their bad run of form was was under two managers. Ranjik and Oli are completely different. The coaching's completely different. And yet they're still playing badly. How long does a run of form, a bad run of form turn into the fact that you're just bad? Maguire plays for England because he plays for Man United. He plays for Man United because he plays for England, says Ted. Businessmen making business decisions every about footballing issues, micromanaging every manager from the shadows. The board have killed this club, says Geordie. And Maguire, Bailey and Jones, uh, all we might have a chance if we sell all these players, says Craig. Right, let's do the player ratings. Links in the video description. Mark every player out of 10. Uh, please smash a like on the video, by the way, and make sure you subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. We've got the fan forum uh, straight after this, where I think it's going to be very interesting. Uh, we've got fan vlogs coming in as well. I think it's going to be a very, very big week ahead of content as well. So make sure you subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. Um, lots and lots to discuss, unfortunately, again. And United are going to need to act, react. Um, they're going to have to need to, they really need to start uh, reacting. Nicholas says you never stop whinging. <laughs> good one, Nicholas. Yeah, good one. I'll put my hand up. Sometimes I probably do over whinge, but I, I think if you can't whinge as a United fan tonight, then you're probably not a United fan. Right, let's do the player ratings. Um, so, um, well, I think De Gea is man of the match by default uh, for me um, because he made, well, he, he was the best performing player on the pitch. And, you know, I'll put, I'll put my hands up. I think on the fourth goal, his kick out was terrible. It was a bad kick out. And I think, you know, I was watching De Gea today and I thought his distribution wasn't bad but then again there was two or three times where it was really bad so look you know his distribution today i watched it it wasn't great i put my hands up well done to the distribution haters but i also saw four world-class saves um and you know if Maguire didn't dummy the ball on the second goal 
he would have he would have had a world class save there as well. So, you know, he was he was the best player in a bad performance. So I would give him a seven. Obviously, this agenda against David De Gea is starting to work now because people are marking him down because of his distribution. But he was clearly the best player on the pitch. Wan Bissaka, I mean, three, three for me. I mean, I like the lad. Offered nothing going forward, and they targeted him. Pep clearly, openly to the world, disrespected him. He targeted him, and 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 they were right to target him because they created chance after chance after chance down that side. He he had a very bad game, and I would say, why is Delo out of the team? I don't understand it. I mean, Delo was doing okay, and he got dropped out of the team for Wan Bissaka, and. I don't understand why Delo has been taken out of the team. I just don't know. I don't. I don't. I just don't. I don't understand why Delo has been taken out of the team. I don't understand it. So, um, Maguire for me three as well. <clears throat> I don't think he was any worse than Wan Bissaka. Um, he was just. You probably could mark him down because he's the captain, and the fact that I, I think you almost give Maguire two marks. I give him three for his playing performance. I give him one for his captaincy because I just don't understand how a captain can let players play like that in the second half. They gave up uh, 90% possession for City. They gave up, they downed tools and they did it on his watch and he let it happen. So as a captain, it's a one out of 10. As a performance, I mean, God, he won a couple of headers. He, he, he won a couple of tackles, but he also cost us two goals at least. Um, you know, the choice was there. People will say we had no other choice because Varane was injured. You could have played Bay. Um, but that was never going to happen. And Lindelof, for me, I think I'd give him a three today as well. I don't think he played very well, which is disappointing because I think recently he's played really well, but he played like Lindelof of last season. He, he looked, you know, maybe sandwiched between wan and Maguire and with McTominay in front of him, who were all crap. Maybe it was infecting, but disappointed from Lindelof because I think he's been good in the last couple of weeks and, he and you know, he, he was really poor today. Um, he was, he was poor. And Tellez as well, I'd give him a three. I'd... I, 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 I'm not going to let him off just because he's a player that people like. I, I, I don't think he played very well. First goal was on him. Uh, Mares in the second half, gave him the runaround. I mean, look, Tellez probably would have had a game as bad as, bad as wan Basaka if they'd targeted Tellez. I mean, they just targeted wan Basaka. But when they actually ran at him in the second half, he, he, he was struggled. Mares got two goals. Um, McTominay again, yep, three. Crap. Absolutely terrible. Worst performance I've ever seen from him. Um, in a Manchester derby when he's all about passion... I'm stunned. I'm stunned because I've seen McTominay play well against Man City. I've seen Rashford play well against Man City. They get it. They're from the youth team. They understand what the derby's all about. And I just don't know. Is he ill? I don't get it. I just, and I'm not saying he's a good player anyway, but I expect better that than that from him. I, I mean, you know, no hate. I just, I'm, I'm really disappointed in McTominay. I don't have high expectations of him anyway, but they're higher than that. And, and that was abysmal. I mean, he was just invisible in the first half. Um, Fred for me is a three as well watch the second goal he just literally stands still stops running he's five yards in front of De Bruyne on the second goal he stops running and De Bruyne just runs past him and has a tap in unforgivable unforgivable and and, and, lack, and, and the second half as well there was a couple of times I saw five Man City shirts running against our back four and Fred wasn't even in the screen I'm like where are you playing? What are you doing? Were you given a free roll or what? Unbelievable. Uh, Pogba for me, I don't think Pogba did that bad. I'd give him a five. I don't understand why we took him off. I, I mean, look, he was below average. Everybody outfield was below average, to be honest. But I don't know why he was took off. I don't think he. I don't think there was a lack of effort from Pogba. I think when he got on the ball, he looked okay on it. I don't. I, I don't understand that substitution at all, if I'm honest. Uh, Bruno would be a four for me. Um, yeah, we're probably about in tune with that. Um, I think somebody made a great point on the watch along. They said that with Bruno, he seems to hit the harder pass more consistently than the easier pass, and uh, he was petulant again. He looked lost. He looked out of control. The second half, he was absolutely shit. Um, first off, he wasn't too bad and we attacked quite well in the... But you know what? Give Pep credit because in the first half, we looked dangerous. In the second half, we were dang we, we, we were we were shambles. And that just shows you again, second half FC. How... We, we keep saying that these players don't come out in the second half. Maybe we should start saying we get figured out in the first half a manager of the opposition adjusts and we don't have a plan B. Maybe that's what keeps happening because we were terrible in the second half. Uh, Sancho would probably give him a six because the goal was so good and it feels unfair to give him 
below average when actually he scored a good goal. But in the second half, he was the invisible man. I, he couldn't get in the game. He, he, he was, and defensively, he wasn't really helping Tellez that much either. So Sancho in the second half was 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 not good. But he, you know, first half he was decent. Alanga, look, probably a five or a four for me. I'd probably give him a four to be honest. Um, which I don't mind. I said it before the game. This week, I've just been hearing about Alanga's going to be this, that and the other. He's going to be the next this, that and the other. And it's like, he's not going to be the next anything if we don't let him learn as a young player. Maybe next week he'll score two goals. Maybe this week he wasn't that good. Stop overhyping and writing young players off. We're just going to have to see what happens with Alanga. And, you know, today it was a difficult game. But to be honest with you, I think you could swap Alanga for Ronaldo and, Alang and Ronaldo would be getting the same score. I don't think it mattered who played up front today. They were going to struggle in a game like this. Lingard, I mean, I'll give him a three. I just, I don't, I don't, I didn't see the point of the substitution. He didn't look like he knew what his job was. Um, and the same with Rashford. I just, I just, they just didn't make any impact. And they came on with 25 minutes. I think they came on in the 63rd minute. They were on for half an hour, a third of the game. And they made no impact on the game at all. Um, again, I'd, I'd put them both in the category of everybody else who I said down tools that, you know, Man City had 90% possession. You're, you're on the pitch, two players. That's nearly, what, 15% of the team. Wasn't good enough. Wasn't good enough. And then Ralph Ranić, Four for me. Um, I like Ranić. I like a, what, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of what Ranić says. But you can't support a team with an agenda. You, you, you've got to be open and honest. And Ranić's substitutions today were weird. The refusal to take McTominay off when you've got Matic on the bench and he's having an absolute stinker was odd. Could have took Wambasaka off for Delo as well. A team that's got 90% possession against you in the second half is an embarrassment. When players are downing tools on your watch, that's an embarrassment. I think that first half, look, first half, we're 2-1 down because the defence is a joke and he should have made subs. Second half, we were worse than the first half and... It was that 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 second half forty five minutes from United is one of the worst forty five minutes I've seen from United in a long long time. It was embarrassing. I don't even think there was many games under Solskjaer. Maybe Everton springs to mind a couple of years ago. There's not been there were there were a few, but when you watch a United team like that and you go that's fucking don't don't pick those players again. They're an embarrassment to the shirt. And I think we saw that today. And, and that, that the manager has to take some responsibility for that. Yes, he's swimming through shit and he's inherited a load of shit. But yeah, he's got to take some responsibility. Jaden Sancho, man of the match. That surprises me. I think your agenda against David De Gea is starting to work. Because for me, he made three slash four world-class saves. Sancho scored one world-class goal. I think it should have gone to De Gea, really. And to be fair, De Gea did get 39% of the vote. But I mean, what did Sancho do in the second half? What did he get do to get man of the match? But... You know, at the end of the day, should De Gea get man of the match when he's conceded four goals? I sort of see it, but I wouldn't. I certainly agree that it, there's there's no other two players that should be getting it. Um, and yeah, and I'm not I'm certainly not going to get into an argument about it when we're talking about one of the. Uh, you know, man of the match doesn't mean anything actually. I don't even know why we're talking about it. I'm tempted to take it off the screen. I, I'm absolutely appalled by that performance. I think it's. Just absolutely disgusting. And look, Peaky Blinders is on tonight. I'm going to sit and watch the fart forum now, and I'm sure they're going to be making some great points as well. And I'm in, I just want to absorb what they've got to say. But it's going to take me a bit of time to get over that. I, I, I'm disgusted, absolutely disgusted. Um, I said it before the game that I'm not writing this game off. I'm not giving them an excuse. A lot of people said we haven't got Varane, we'll lose this game. And I said I'm not writing this game off because I'm not going to give them an excuse because it's a Manchester derby and they should be putting in a performance and they didn't and that's a disgrace um, I was never going to come back with some of these players anyway I put my hands up and say there were some of these players even if they played really well a couple of games I wouldn't have been convinced by them it would take me a long long I won't be coming you know the next time one of these slot as it scores a goal and people start going my midfielder or my centre back not mine I won't forget that for a long time some of those players today, absolute disgrace. Anyway, let's see what they've got to say on the fan forum. I'll push you over there now. Thanks, everyone, for watching.